Today we're going to be getting some free Wi-Fi by solving this integral here. Let's give it a go. Okay, so two things to mention first about when I came across this, oh, you need to solve this integral to gain free Wi-Fi, were, there were two things that stood out to me. The first was the fact that the dx was inside the square root, and the other part was that it said, just find the first digits of the number that you get out of this integral, and that's your Wi-Fi password. And it didn't specify how many digits you needed, but I have seen other versions of this free Wi-Fi password since, and there are some that say I'll do the first five digits and some that actually include the DX outside of the square root as it should be. So you might notice when you look at this integral, there is one quite obvious thing we can do to begin with, and that is just expanding this out into two different integrals. What we get is we get the integral from two minus two, and we have x cubed cos x over two, four minus x squared dx plus the same integral but this time we have a half four minus x squared dx okay so here we have two different integrals so we have the first integral and the second integral uh, and this is what we're trying to calculate so what we can do is we can label both of these so we can label this one here we'll call this I1, so integral 1, and we'll label this one I2, so integral 2, and we're going to do treat both the integrals separately. Okay, so the first thing is both of these integrals have little tricks that you can do with them, and I'm going to show you the first trick in integral number 1. So what we can consider are odd and even functions. Even functions are essentially sub graphically symmetrical functions, so you can take, for example, terribly drawn, but y equals x squared. And this is graphically symmetrical because around the origin here, there's a symmetry. So this in itself is what is known as an even function. So that can be written as, so if we have an even function, an even function can be written as f of minus x equals f of x. So that's what's known as an even function. Now we'll need that for a little kind of step in this calculation. Another thing are odd functions. So for example, we can have uh, y equals x cubed, which is an odd function. Terribly drawn y equals x cubed function, but this is y equals x cubed. And this itself is an odd function. When you take an integral of an odd function, which is a function like this, what you notice is, say we have an integral from a to minus a. So let's call this a here, and then let's call this minus a here. Essentially, when you compute the integral between such points, they cancel out. So what you end up with is zero. So when you take an integral of an odd function between a and minus a, we get that the integral is zero. So for notation of an odd function, an odd function can be written like this. So we have an odd function is f, and then we have minus x, and that is minus f of x. So that's kind of some notation for odd and even functions there. And the reason that we need that is because it will help us when we solve integral number one. So I've just flipped the board around so we can focus on this integral number one that we have here, and I've just kept the definition of what even and odd function are here. So what we're going to try and do with this integral is we're going to try and prove that this function inside the integral is an odd function, and that when you integrate, you essentially get zero. So we're going to try and prove that this condition holds here, which is f of minus x equals minus f of x. So all we're going to try and do is we're just going to take f of x, which is going to be this here. So we'll call this f of x. And what we're going to try and prove is when you put a minus x inside here, we're going to get the same value out, but with a minus sign in front. So let's go ahead and, and show that. So if we have, let's do f of minus x. And f of minus x is just going to be minus x all cubed, 
cos of minus x over 2 square root of 4 minus minus x squared. Okay, so that's what f of minus x is. Now what we can do is simplify this. So if you remember anything from mathematics, if you take uh, a negative, so negative x cubed, we're going to get negative x cubed out front. So this is going to become negative x cubed. Now for this next part, this might not be that easy to spot, but essentially cos itself as a function is even, so it satisfies this condition here, which is that f of minus x equals f of x. So we can just remove this minus sign and the same holds. So we end up with cos of x over 2. Now the final part, again, if we take a minus value and square it, we get the positive value squared. So we'll end up with 4 minus x squared. Now, if we look at what we found here and compare it with what we have originally for f of x, you'll notice that it is indeed an odd function. We have that when you plug in minus x, we get minus the function of x. So we can say, well, this, therefore, is minus f of x. And therefore, it's an odd function. Okay, awesome. Now, one thing to note is that we can say, oh yes, this is, this is an odd function, but that doesn't necessarily mean that when you take an integral of the odd function, it's going to cancel out and equal zero. Now, the important point to note is that you need to essentially have limits that are a and minus a for some symmetry. So what we can say is this integral i, i1, is going to be zero by the condition that we have between a and minus a, and this function is odd. So we can just say from all of this, here, we can say that i1 must equal zero. Okay, so we've done a lot of the uh, hard calculations there uh, for this integral. Now we're going to focus on the next integral, which is i2. Okay, awesome. So we're moving on to integral number two, which is given by this here. And I've just simplified it by taking this half out front, out front, out of the front, of the integral here. I was sounding very Yorkshire then. <laughs> so yeah, this is the integral here and we're going to solve it. So this again has a little bit of a trick to it. And what we can do is we can look at what is inside this integral here again, similar to what we did before where we had f of x, but this time instead of calling it f of x, we're going to call it y. So inside the integral, we essentially have that y equals the square root of four minus x squared. So if we square both sides, we end up with y squared, y squared equals 4 minus x squared. And then if you take over the x squared, we end up with y squared plus x squared equals 4. Now, does anybody recognise what this equation is? It's an equation of a circle, where typically an equation of a circle, quite generalised, is uh, y squared plus x squared equals r squared, where this is a, a circle at the origin. Okay, so we know that this equation that we had uh, in the integral is a circle around the origin, and it has radius 2. Okay, so we can draw that. We essentially have, we'll have y, x, and this is the circle. So the circle has equation this. Now we know that the radius is 2, so this point here must be 2. This point here must be minus 2. I drew that a bit further away, but that's minus 2. That's 2. And again, yeah, we have the same here. So 2 and minus 2. So when we take the integral of this equation, so that's essentially what we're doing here, we have that the form inside here is a circle. We then take the integral from these two limits, so 2 and minus 2, we end up wanting to integrate well. We end, up want, we end up calculating essentially this area inside here, because that's what integrals are. Integrals are essentially just calculating areas under the curve. So this is the part that we're going to find, and that's what we're trying to find. Now, if you remember anything from circles and computing areas of circles, you may remember that the area of a circle So the area of a circle is given by pi r squared. Okay, great. 
So this whole thing here is going to be pi r squared, but we only want half of it, so we know that the area of this inside here, so area, is going to be a half of this, so it's going to be a half pi r squared. I've written that quite rough, rough there, so I'll just write it down here. So we know that the area, which is also going to equal the integral of 2 to minus 2 of 4 minus x squared dx will equal what we've just said, which is a half pi r squared, which is a half pi 2 squared, which simplifying we get 4 multiplied by 0.5, so yeah, divide by 2 is going to be 2 pi, but not forgetting the half out front. So we know that this is what that integral is, but if we want the integral i2, so we can say i2 is this multiplied by half, which is this multiplied by half. So if we do a half times by 2 pi, that gives us pi. So that is the answer for i2. And now that we have the answer for i1 and i2, we're going to put them together, compute the entire integral. So let's get back to the other side of the whiteboard. And then from what we've just calculated, this is 0 plus pi. So we end up with pi, and this is 3.14159. Two six five three five eight nine, etc. So I guess in this question you can take as many digits as you want. There you have it. The answer to the Wi-Fi password is pi. So that was the way to solve this integral. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know. I'm hoping to do some more videos, quirky videos like this, and also just solving some mathematics as well on my channel. Let me know if you liked it and if you have any other recommendation for other videos. Yeah, let me know. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please like, subscribe and comment and I'll see you all in the next one.